What's up everyone? I am John Rettinger and welcome to another edition of Ask the Buffalo where you can ask me anything you want from the world of tech, from mobile phones, computers, tablets, laptops, anything that plugs in or uses rechargeable batteries, go ahead and ask. You can submit your questions two ways. The first one is either on the website, technobuffalo.com. We'll have a post up there and you can leave your questions in the comments. Or you can send an at reply to me on Twitter with the hashtag AskTheB to either the official Techno Buffalo Twitter handle, which is at Techno Buffalo, or my personal one, which is at John Ford Lakers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first question comes to us from Twitter and user IRBeast. John, what is your favorite Verizon phone? Uh, that's an excellent question. There are two phones that I think are absolutely outstanding on Verizon. They've got a ton of great devices out there. First, if you are in an LTE area, the one that you need to pick up, in my opinion, out of all their LTE devices, which are currently just two, the Charge and the Thunderbolt, is the Samsung Built Droid Charge. LTE speeds are absolutely amazing. I've been getting between five and 10 megabits down and about three megabits per second up, which is almost on par with standard uh, comb connections. Absolutely great device. And the best thing about this has been the battery life. I'm able to get through a full day, which is not something I can say about the Thunderbolt. It doesn't have a dual core processor, but it is extremely fast, rocking the latest and greatest updated Hummingbird. So if you are looking for an LTE phone, and even if you're signing a two-year contract and you're not in an LTE area now, you might be in an LTE area in the future. If you live in the, perhaps the middle of nowhere and you don't think you're going to be getting LTE in the next few years and you want to go Android, the new X2 for Verizon is a fantastic device. If you are looking for something that's perhaps less future-proof, uh, the iPhone 4 on Verizon is always a solid choice. I happen to have one right here. If you ever see someone using an iPhone 4 and you want to tell whether or not it's for Verizon or not, sort of a handy little trick. I won't have the FCC business on the bottom here if it is a Verizon iPhone. Kind of interesting. So those would be my top two choices for Verizon phones. All right, the next question comes to us again from Twitter. This is FSU Ferosti, who is asking, John, why did you choose the MacBook Pro as one of your first videos? Uh, for those of you that might have been following me on YouTube at John Ford Lakers, you know that my first video was an unboxing of a MacBook Pro. Hello everybody, my name is John. I'm a recent Mac switcher. It was an extremely unprofessional unboxing. I was really, really nervous. It was about four and a half years ago. Uh, I had been watching a ton of YouTube videos at the time. It was really before there were a lot of tech reviewers out there. And I knew that I wanted to try it. I had never used a Mac before, I had had PCs my whole life, and I figured if I made some videos on a new computer, it would force me to learn it. It was a new operating system, OS X at the time. I didn't know anything about it or how to use it, and I figured videos would be a nice way to do it. Uh, it was also an excuse for me to buy a video camera, <laughs> um, which being a, a tech guy, all I needed was a reason to justify it in my head. So that was why I picked the MacBook Pro as my first video. The next question comes to us once again from Twitter. This is user Blue42Richman who asks, how do you balance hands-on time with the review device with the speed required for SEO videos and reviews? So I think what he's asking is how do I do a ton of phone reviews and be able to give each phone the time it deserves. Uh, really at any given time I'm reviewing about two phones that are coming out uh, and I'm really glad that you asked this question. I know a lot of you guys out there are looking to get into the phone reviewing world um, but it's tough to sort of balance time to make sure the phone is getting a review. You can give your audience the most honest review possible. If you just use a phone for a day you're not going to know enough about it. Sometimes our reviews come a little bit later than other sites because I'm spending a lot of time with these phones and I really want to know all the nuances. Uh, so to answer your question, the first thing that I'll do is I will sit with the phone for one hour. I will play, even if it's a familiar phone that I've used and I've used Android before, for example, I will sit with the phone, I'll go through all the widgets, I'll try everything, I'll try the speed of the phone, I'll compare it to a few other devices that I have with me. And the next thing I do is I hop in the car. Uh, and I've got a loop sort of around my neighborhood. I'm in Southern California. Uh, it's about a five mile loop and I will make 20 test calls. Um, and that sometimes can take uh, a while. It generally takes about an hour and a half, two hours. Usually I just keep calling my wife. 
uh, see if I have any drop calls or how the call quality is, how their speakerphone is, how it connects to Bluetooth. Now that's certainly only representative of where I am in Southern California as far as call quality. Uh, but it will give me a sense of whether or not it drops a lot of calls, and oftentimes that's representative of a bad antenna. It's sort of a long-winded answer uh, to say that I really make sure that each phone um, gets the time it deserves, and this is my job. Uh, so I can spend you know, as much time as I need from 8 in the morning until 12 in the afternoon just with one phone. And I can do that for three, four, five, you know, six days even uh, to make sure I can give you guys the most honest opinions possible. All right, let's go to the next one, which comes once again from Twitter. This is AJ Gorin one What do you use most often? Tablets, phones, PCs? That include Macs. Uh, I use my computers uh, quite a bit. Uh, so first one you can see behind me, uh, it's connected to, where it is, right there behind me. Uh, it's connected to a 27 inch iMac. I do all of my video editing uh, on a Mac. I either use Final Cut Express or iMovie depending on the difficulty of video editing that needs to be done. So most of my time is spent right here in this chair staring at that screen. Um, doing all of my video editing. When I feel the need to get some direct sunshine, uh, I might go work across the street and I will bring my MacBook Air with me and I can do some light video editing in my movie, but it's not that fast. Uh, generally, if I'm you know, just sitting in bed or sitting on the couch, uh, I've got my smartphone with me and I'm checking Twitter or YouTube and that really depends on what phone I am testing or using at the time. Uh, currently, I am using the Samsung Infuse 4G as my daily phone, so that's what I've got with me uh, sitting on the couch. Sometimes before bed, I will watch YouTube videos on a tablet. If I'm testing a new tablet, that's what I'll be using, uh, but generally, I've got the iPad 2 with me. So hopefully, uh, that answers your question. All right, let's go to the next one. This comes from Jamie Ben Hughes at John Ford Lakers. Have tablets killed off the netbook industry? If not, and when? The netbook industry really boomed up the past few years with the advent of the Intel Atom chip, low powered, low power consumption, and you're able to use it as a standard computer. Uh, I've said this time and time again. Tablets are fantastic for media consumption. Great for watching video, great for browsing the web, not so good for media consumption. Uh, I'm not going to create spreadsheets, Word documents, whatever, PowerPoint, whatever you're doing. Uh, it's very difficult to do on a tablet. Uh, for that demographic, I think netbooks are really going to always have a place uh, that is until tablets become a tool for media creation. I look at a device like the uh, ePad Transformer, uh, which has a keyboard and it's got a trackpad. Uh, and suddenly you sort of cross that boundary a little bit where tablets can be used uh, for easy media creation. Uh, with Android allowing now uh, mice, so you can actually have a cursor. Uh, it's becoming a lot more prevalent to use tablets for media consumption. I don't think that the uh, tablet OS's are where they need to be for what's going to kill the Netflix industry, uh, but I would say we're heading in that direction very quickly, uh, perhaps in iOS 5 or even in Android ice cream sandwich. So hopefully that helps answer your question. Uh, the next question comes from the website. This is from Quint Hobbs. Do you think there will be a smart cover for the iPhone 5? For those of you guys that don't know, this is a smart cover on the iPad 2. It is a polyurethane or leather little magnetic case hooks on on the side that protects your iPad 2 and can prop it up and do all kinds of business with it. Um, I definitely do not think we'll see a smart cover for the iPhone 5. Uh, first of all, who's going to really prop up their phone? Generally, you're holding it in your hand. Imagine pulling a magnetic latch out of your pocket. It's going to fall off. Um, just not going to happen. I would say very strongly no. We're not going to see a smart cover for the iPhone 5. Perhaps we'll see an evolution of the bumper that we've got for a case for the iPhone 4. Speaking of mobile operating systems, all right, let's go ahead and jump into the next question, which comes from Max Kissel, I believe is how you pronounce it. Hey, John, what do you think about the new Mango update coming to Windows Phone 7? You think it'll put the OS compared to the iOS and such? LOL, thoughts on the Pre-3. I am a huge fan of Windows Phone 7. I've got the Samsung Focus here, uh, but the new Mango update, which is the new software update coming to Windows Phone 7, uh, I think that we're finally going to see OS parity. 
Uh, I, again, really like Windows Phone 7, and I think I could use it as my daily OS, but there are some things that's really missing. A unified inbox for one. Uh, if you're like me and I've got a work email address, I've got a business email address, um, work and business are actually two separate emails, and I've got a personal one, so I've got three emails going. When you're looking at the smart tiles on a Windows Phone 7 operating system, it can be a bit tough when your whole screen is filled up with a few uh, inboxes, so I would love to see a unified inbox. Uh, we're finally going to see multitasking, actually doing a process called tombstoning, which sounds sort of violent, but all it does essentially kills the app right where you are and lets you go back to it. There's a ton of other security features that are going in. Uh, we now have cut copy and paste, we saw with the Noto update. So the answer to your question is yes, I think we'll see OS parity, and I think Windows Phone 7 will be as viable an option as iOS is and Android is, and as hopefully WebOS will be on the Pre 3, which is another device I am really looking forward to getting my hands on. I was able to see one and test it very quickly at the touchpad conference in San Francisco, which was, and I believe, in uh, February at this point. Um, really excited, hopefully that's going to come very soon, although I do wish it had an on-screen keyboard. Uh, the next question and last question comes from Twitter, and this is user Ross Jamison, I'm giving you a lot of head bobs. Uh, ask the B, what are your thoughts on the Apple Store 2.0? For those of you guys that don't know, it's the 10 year anniversary of the Apple Retail Store, and they've redone and revamped, slowly at least, uh, all the Apple stores across the country and the world, and if they haven't done yours yet, uh, they will be very soon. Uh, what they've done, and now they're using iPads, a sort of smart tags so you can go through if you're looking at a MacBook Pro. Next to the MacBook Pro display, there'll be an iPad with all different information. Uh, you can even page a sales associate to come over to you. Um, if you don't want to just raise your hand or go up and say, excuse me, uh, you'll now have the option to just page someone, which is great when the stores get really busy. Uh, they can actually come and answer your question. should help a bit with staffing. Uh, a bit of a redesign in there as well. I think it looks nice, certainly a modernization. Uh, the Apple Store is very clean, it's iconic, and it's become sort of a beacon for consumer electronic uh, retails. And it's really become a model that a lot of companies have tried to imitate. So I hope you guys enjoyed this edition of Ask the Buffalo. I am John Rettinger, and if you have any other questions that come up, be sure to check out the website or the Twitter feed, and we'll let you know when we're filming another Ask the Bee, and we'll get your question answered. I'll see you guys in the next video.